Hey, 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 guys, Alta V. Spelzer here, your voice manager. I unmute the voice of women who are ready to speak up about what has kept her silent for way too long. And you saw the title, Know Your Numbers. Uh, listen, PPP facts, fails, and tales. That's what it, that's, I feel like that should be the subtitle for this particular episode. Because, man, if you don't know your numbers, that can hold you back. And we did not see that um, more than we've saw, seen it this year with people who needed the PPP loans and the government loans during COVID for their small business. And they weren't able to file for it. They weren't able to get it. Or they did some other stuff to try to get it. And we're you know, going to talk a little bit about what's going to happen on the back end for some of them people. But with that being said, I'm excited about our guest for today. Hello, Elaine. How are you? Hello. <laughs> now, I had the pleasure of hearing and knowing Elaine for maybe about four or five years now and watching her. And listen, it, she's always been about knowing your numbers. And if you don't know your numbers, Mm, you on the road to the wrong direction. <laughs> but before we get into that, um, Elaine, tell the studio audience a little bit about yourself and then we'll dive into today's topic. Okay, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much, Elderbees, for having me. I just remember you with, uh, I I'm going to remember this saying. I always remember that. <laughs> I met El Elderbees probably a little bit over four and a half years ago and um you know it's it, it's always good to be in the presence of people who are striving and and you know allowing us to to speak because um from our community we sometimes don't like to speak out against the things that affect us and one of the things that i know that we don't like to talk about it's taboo is money we don't like to talk about money i, I know she says introduction but i that's me I talk all things about money. I am Elaine Forbes Daisley, otherwise known as the Elaine Forbes. Yes, <laughs> I help I help business owner to eliminate the frustration of bookkeeping by taking receipts, invoice, and turning them into useful data so that they can file your taxes, get financial report, that PPP loan needed some financial report, and also make useful financial decision. I, I go through the process using QuickBooks. I'm a speaker, an author, uh, <laughs> QuickBook Pro Advisor and Accountant, and there are some other things. But most importantly, I'm a virtual accountant. Do you need me to say anything else? <laughs> <laughs> no, because that was definitely enough. Man, so let's talk about, let's start at the beginning. Because knowing your numbers, what would you say to someone who's in their business and they're like, well, what do you mean by know my numbers? What are the numbers that I need to know? And 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 I, I know that a lot of people knowing your numbers is used for various different things. But when it comes to your business, you got there is several important numbers that as a business owner, if you don't know these, you're not in business, you're a hobby. So you need to know that you need to know how much money you're making. You need to know how much profit you're making. You need to know how much, how much you need to sell to make the amount of profit. Those are just some of the numbers that you need to know. So it's like, if you don't know those numbers, if you are not staying on top of your numbers, then that means you're not in business. You're in a hobby. I that mean part to right there. Ooh, because so many people coming into the industry, they get it. They, they get it in their head. Oh, I'm supposed to hustle, 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 and um, put out all this money for not really paying attention. Because I listen, Speakeasy Podcast listeners, I'm telling you from experience, yeah. I was putting out way more money than what I was bringing in. I was mm -hmm. paying to be on stages. I was paying to be at events. I was traveling and I was not making any income in my business in the beginning. I was putting out more money because it was, um, what did they coin it? Exposure. 
<laughs> yes, yes. And it's and and don't get me wrong, Altavis, it's okay in the beginning for you to to it it is called investment. There the problem mm-hmm. is the problem is is that a lot of people are investing in their business, but they're not tracking their investment. So when time come for them to pull out of their business, they don't know how to take that money. They don't know how much they invest in their business. So people, like you said, you know, you were, you were paying for, for, for speaking, you're paying for this, but you were not tracking it even as an investment into your business. Mm, that part, <laughs> that part. And I, I think, you know, there's this, I guess there's this like stigma. There's like this heaviness that comes when people start talking about investing in your business because mm. we've had so many people kind of use it as a, like the, the dangling carrot in front of you. Oh, it's an investment in your business, but you truly have to know your numbers in order for you to know, is this truly an investment? Like that's what the point. It? That's it. You know, what's the return on this investment? And um, honestly, the first the first year after rebranding I can tell you that I did a lot more than what I should have matter of fact the first couple years but it when I decided that I was going to be you know I'm no longer going to be that uh side hustler I'm not going to be that person that's the hobbyist Mm -hmm. uh working with an expensive hobby that I was really going to do this as a business some things had to change. So with that being said, Elaine, what is the first thing that you would tell them um, for them to start getting into this habit of knowing their numbers? The the first thing when you decide to, to change your business or to decide that you're really in business is that the first thing you have to do is to look at where you are, see exactly what position you are, And then I have a famous thing to say, there are seven things that you need, your business need to run. And uh, I talk about your, your management of your business. You are the entrepreneur, the CEO or the visionary, whatever you want to call it. You need to have your finance in order and finance mean bookkeeping, your, your bookkeeping, you need your branding. You also need your, um, your production and you need that, 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 sales and marketing. The mistake that most people make is that as a business owner, they spend way too much on one area and they don't know because they, because somebody says, oh, I can market your products. So they start to spend a lot of money into marketing, but they don't know, they don't pay attention to their finance. Okay. So how, how am I tracking these, this marketing to see if it is actually working? How much am I spending on marketing? How much sales am I making to actually, because, um, from the financial services industry, one of the things that we do say, and I hope I'm not speaking too fast because people tend to say I speak fast. No, no, no. But, you're good. You're good. I, I'm, I'm okay. fi- I know I'm following along. Speak easy podcast <laughs> listeners. I hope y'all are following along. If not, then you may have to pause it, write down your notes and then press play. I understand. It's okay. <laughs> right. So, so one of the things that, that, um, that a lot of business owners, when they're transitioning, because they're not keeping track of how much are they supposed to be spending. And like I said, in the financial services industry, industry as an accountant, we tend to say your your marketing budget needs to be at least 10% of your gross revenue. You know, that's one way to look at it. I know that marketing people say something completely different, but as a person who, who is in business, if you're spending um, way over that 10%, then it means that you are your revenue is 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 shot. You know what I'm saying? So in the beginning, in the well, it is normal for the first two years or three years that you might not make any profit, or you might spend more on marketing than you spend on the other areas. 
And I find like in the online community, people tend to say, oh, I'm going to this class because um, it's going to make me, show me how to get leads. Oh, I'm going to this class because they're good. But, but not many of them go to classes that's going to teach them how to actually develop each area in their business. So they're investing, but they're not investing in the right area. So when you get ready to move your business, upscale your business, the first thing you got to do, and and uh, and I know I'm talking about bookkeeping and people might say, oh, oh, but um, but the first thing you need to do is that you need to take all those areas, find out what you're going to need before you start to invest. Because if you start to invest and not know the areas that you need to invest in, then you're going to screw, skew, oh, can't even talk, skew your, skew your stuff. And, and you know, it, it is amazing, Alta V's, because, um, I just finished reading this book called Profit First. I am not an affiliate. I don't get any commission. But as an accountant, reading that book, I'm like, everybody in business needs to read it. Because it, it, it sheds a light differently on, on how you do business. You know, because most, most business owners tend to spend 110% of what they make. Don't ask me how they do that because that's not mathematics, but they're spending 110 because they are using the wrong money to put in their business. Not all money is good money for your business. You need to know if you're making 100% of, of what's your sales. So, you know, I'm a numbers person, so I'm going to use a number. Okay. So if you make $10,000 in revenue, you need to understand how much money did I did I put in to make this ten thousand dollars? What most business owners do is that they take that ten thousand dollars and they spend it all because they want to now make twenty thousand dollars. But they spend the ten thousand dollars plus they go into their they they go and borrow money to put in to say we want to make ten thousand dollars more. You know, because, oh, if you put more money in, you're supposed to get more money out. That's not how it works. You got to take those numbers. Look at those numbers. Look what you are doing. Look at your expenses. You should only be spending 90% of your, your gross revenue on your expenses, on your operating expenses. Okay, because another mistake, because most small business don't know their numbers, they don't pay themselves. So, and then, now here's a crazy thing, and, and, and this might sound contradicting, but here's a crazy thing. What they will do is that they won't pay themselves, but they will take the company accounts and pay their personal expenses. So let's tell you what that does. You have to understand, you can, you can write off most things in your business, almost anything, but it's how you write it off, where you write it off. It's not just about saying, oh, I'm going to go buy dinner and, and I'm going to charge it to the company. There is a way that you do it. And I've sit and listened to people say, oh, I just run all my expenses through my business. But you see, and that's why some people were actually denied from the PPP loan. Because even though you can write off almost anything, you don't just use your personal, your business for personal expenses. That's called commingling. And the government will tell you that you don't have a business. You have an expensive hobby. So knowing your numbers, understanding how you're doing stuff will will help you to actually run your business in an effective manner. So if you've been running your business like that, hello, somebody. If you've been running, I'll be transparent. I've had those days. That's why I can talk about it. And get. And I don't know if you know the thing that says a shoemaker, kid never had a good shoes. I had to graduate myself from that. 
because it is our tendency that when we are professional, our, we don't apply our professional stuff to our own self. I had to graduate myself from that. So I know what I'm talking about. And yes, I had a failed business. So I know what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness. And I think about that this year more than any, when it came to the PPP loan, that was just, for a lot of businesses, that was devastating because they Mm -hmm. couldn't get that loan. And then you had a lot of them that went and did some not Not so so truthful stuff. Right, exactly. Not so legal stuff. (laughs) They did some not so legal things in order for them to get the PPP loan. Now, for those of you who are listening, the PPP loan is... um, was a forgiveness loan. Let's start by selling that. It was a forgiveness loan that they had set up through the government um, for small business owners uh, when it came to COVID and the fact that everybody was shut down and it was to help some of the small businesses. Now, what we found out along the way was that uh, small business is not uh, a numbers game. Like it's not small business, meaning you only have five people in your company, no. but there's certain criteria yes. that make you a small business. And mm-hmm. so some of the companies that you looked at, uh, that received, that actually received funding, you probably never thought of them as being a small business. <laughs> the same way well, that we looked at the NFL and was like, wait, they're a nonprofit? Yeah, that- that, that's crazy because a lot of people don't realize that small business as per the government has uh, an income threshold. And if you fall below that income threshold, I, I think it's a couple of million dollars, which most 90% of the real small business will never probably, I'm not going to say never, would would not be at that so that is the the thing is that most small business don't understand that so when they say small business they're not talking about people who are not making any money because most of us they're talking about an, an income threshold so like you said it's not the size of how much people you have in a business it's more an income they they have several other criteria but the one that shocked most people that most people come to recognition with when it came to covid was the 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 income threshold because that's where most people are either qualify or disqualify and the the, the ppp loan was payroll protection uh no i don't remember what the e is but what what a lot of business owners did not realize is when they announced the PPP loan, they say you can get $10,000. Now, a lot of small business who had only one employee was hoping that they could get $10,000. Unfortunately, they only got $1,000 because that's all. It was $1,000 per employee, right? And that was a forgiveness loan. And, And what The problem with some of them is because they don't have a financial statement. And I really want to stress this because a lot of of small business think, I don't need a financial statement. I don't make a lot of money. I don't have a lot of transaction. So I don't need to do a financial statement. Yes, you do need to do a financial statement. It's not about how much transaction. It's not about how much money you have because you are investing in your business. So you need to have a balance sheet to show that you have made a certain amount of investment into your business. Exactly. Even if you're not making, making a lot of money, you would have acquired assets. You would have invested into your business. And basically what that what the balance sheet said is that I have this amount of asset and this is the amount of equity that I put in the business. That part. Oh my goodness, that is so valuable. And, and like we said, 
this is the stuff that people don't talk about when it comes to you Mm -hmm. rebranding your business, when you getting started in business. And so many people go towards the hype of, yeah, take this class because this class will help you to get more followers. Take this class because this class will help you to get more people in your group. Take this class. It'll help you do Facebook ads. And we're looking at all of these different things and that shiny object syndrome pops up. But in all actuality, um, the core things that you need, you don't even have because guess what? That financial piece is so very valuable and important. And so Elaine, let the studio audience know where they can find you online um, and how they can actually get a copy of the book as well. Oh, which is <laughs> several, several book. I have another one coming out. That's what the, she, she knocked me with a book first of all. <laughs> So, oh Jesus! I know, as means I know you love to talk about books. <laughs> yes, so guys, indeed. I am online. I know um, it, on Facebook it's Elaine Daisley. Um, I'm on Instagram as the Elaine Forbes or Create Financial Solution because that's part of my brand, Create Financial Solution because I help you to create financial solutions. And um, I have a group, Create Financial Solution. You can jump on, knock on the door, we'll let you in. It's a free group. We also, um, I'm on Twitter. Uh, it's, it's the hardest thing to tell you what my Twitter name is because I don't even remember it. <laughs> but I'm there. <laughs> and then um, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. I think it's also Elaine Daisley. I am there. Um, I wrote two books. Actually, they are the workbook. I'm in the process of doing the book will come out in November, but I have financial planning made easy. That's also on Amazon. And I, it's on Amazon. (laughs) And I also have business building, the business building workbook that helps you because I find like a lot of people as business owner, they don't sit down and plan it out, write down some stuff. I I write in my own book. I have a copy for myself that I, that I write, that I write in. I'm actually, because I'm, I, I run QuickBooks training and I know that's that's one of the software that a lot of people recommend. And going, I by the time this 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 podcast air, um, you all be getting ready for taxes, yeah. right? And it's very important to understand how to maximize your deductions mm. because going what what is going to affect most people out of these whether we believe it or not the effect of 2020 is going to hit us next year and if you don't have records especially if you had gotten the ppp loan you need to you need to have a system to have tracked all that money that you have spent over that period of time. And one of the software that I use is QuickBooks Online. And I do have training and upcoming class. Um, by the time you get this, the class would have been gone because I'm doing the last class for 2020. And that's going to be um, in November. So by the time it's here, that class would have been been gone. I also so do workshop i also do workshop on bookkeeping made easy because one of the important things out of these is that business owners do not understand accounting it it doesn't matter if somebody's doing your bookkeeping it doesn't matter if you have an accountant it doesn't matter if you have a tax strategist you as a business owner need to understand bookkeeping or rather accounting you need to be able to understand what they what the bookkeeper does and how it translates to you as the owner so we're doing the bookkeeping made easy workshop that's going to be probably be at the end of each month it's a two-day workshop where i show you everything that you need to know when it comes to accounting because i'll be saying debits and credits and bookie um, business owner be talking about what i'll be saying you need a financial statement and they might understand a profit and loss but what does go into a financial state in more than a profit and loss i'll be saying here's your balance sheet and and you look at it and don't understand it because yes accountant does have a language and as a business owner even if you don't speak that language fluently you need to understand when it is spoken to you indeed 
Guys, this is all about you being able to not only be in business, but we want you to have a successful business. Speak Easy Podcast listeners, you know we appreciate each and every one of you. Why? Because without you, there would be no Speak Easy Podcast show. So with that being said, make sure that you come and join the conversation. bit.ly forward slash World Voice Community. Come into the free group and join the conversation. Let us know how this particular episode resonated with you. Also, you can give us a review on your favorite podcasting platform. Let us know how we're doing and what are some of the other topics that you are interested in in hearing about. With that being said, I appreciate you as your host, out to Vis Pelzer, your voice manager. Until next time, don't forget to press it out. See ya.